Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about low estrogen levels. And typically we think of women as they enter menopause, uh, as in perimenopause, having low estrogen. And certainly that is most common, but we're also seeing it in our younger women as well. So we'll talk about that in the future, but let's talk about low estrogen and what it can cause. Estrogen is very protective for your bones, for your cholesterol level, uh, for your heart, but it also protects your brain. And what most people don't appreciate is that your brain, every single cell in your brain, has what's called receptor sites for sex hormones. So what I'm talking about affects men with their sex hormones as well. So maintaining an ideal level of sex hormones as we age is very, very critical for brain function, cognitive function, so you don't have brain fog and you are acute mentally. When you have low estrogen, you can suffer from mood swings and depression. Uh, you can get urinary tract infections easily. You can have vaginal dryness and low libido. You can be tired. So there's a long list of things that low estrogen can cause. And so what, what can we do about it? Diet is always a key when it comes to really all aspects of our health. And if we don't have a good diet, then it's kind of hard for anything to, to work well. So I like to give tips that anyone can do. And uh, the first one actually has to do with a vitamin. So it's your vitamin D level. Uh, D is actually a hormone also. So we're talking about estrogen, uh, the predominant female hormone being low. Well, vitamin D that, you know, we call it a vitamin, but it is actually a hormone. And it's almost epidemically low in, in our country and probably mostly throughout the world unless you live near the equator and you're kind of light skinned. But it's, it's very, very common, let's put it that way, that vitamin D is low and vitamin D acts to uh, produce good estrogen levels. It's also very protective of our immune system. And so there's a lot of good reasons to have a good D level. It's not expensive to get checked. Uh, it's also not expensive to supplement. So you want to um, get it to about 60 nanograms per milliliter, which in the US is how it's measured. So when you see your blood test, it has NG forward slash ML, and that's what that stands for. Uh, some people think higher is better, and that's not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, you definitely don't want it above 100. Usually people who are trying to get it near 100 have cancer, and it's considered protective and helpful in that regard. But uh, here at Root Cause, we, we like it around 60 or so. That's a really ideal level for most people. Uh, then we go on to nuts and seeds. Uh, sesame seeds and flax seeds actually help to uh, produce more estrogen and also soy that has phytoestrogens, which phyto just means plant. And um, soy has, has gotten a bad rap over the years, some of it legitimately and then some of it not. So it's kind of what we do to soy that's the problem. It's natural phytoestrogens have not been associated with increased cancer risk, but the problem with soy is that it's a very abused crop and it is a very GMO influence. So unless your soy says it's organic, you want to be very, very careful to avoid soybean oil. Um, if, if you're getting a prepackaged processed food and it says soybean oil, you can guarantee that it contains GMO. So that's something you want to avoid. But as far as having a little soy milk, adding that to a smoothie, uh, enjoying tofu, things like that, uh, soybeans themselves, then that is very helpful and can absolutely help you maintain a good estrogen level. Now, these are some simple tips, but if you're really suffering from the, the brain fog, the depression, the weight gain, any of those things I mentioned earlier, then you definitely, um, if you do some dietary changes and that's not enough, uh, don't stop there. You don't need to suffer with low estrogen. There's a lot of things that can be done 
nutritionally, also with bioidentical hormones. And it's really worth your while because it's very protective, as I said, for your bones, for your heart, and for your brain. And, um, you know, I don't care how old we get, uh, one thing we, we hope to hold on to is that cognitive function that makes you you and allows you to process things in, in your life and enjoy life. So um, if you are suffering in this regard and you want some help, please feel free to reach out. My clinic's uh, website is root cause medical clinics, that's plural, dot com, and we offer telemedicine across the country and we actually specialize in hormones, hormonal health.